Welcome back. And yeah, I do kind of sound like your grandma, probably. Uh, that's just because I'm pretty much losing my voice. Don't be alarmed. It is coming back. I don't think it's anything permanent. But let me tell you what also is not working. Our trapping efforts have pretty much been a, just a huge failure. But that is the purpose of today's video. We are going to go down here and we are going to set more traps trying to catch whatever it was that killed our little baby chick. But another little bit of information for you before we go down here, you might want to wait around to the end of the video because we have a special experiment that you guys probably don't want to miss. I'm going to show you guys that, and there's been nobody on any platform get updated about this experiment. At least the most recent update about it. So make sure to stay tuned. It's pretty cool. What is that? Oh, that's the one we played. Yeah, we had that out trying to train Finn to be a coon dog, right? Get up here. You got it. There we go. Get it. Get it. Come on. Come on. Tree at coon. There you go. Good boy. We have like a mixture of everything in this trap. Peanut butter, marshmallows. It's just not been a good time with the whole trapping scenario we got going on. Now I will say I haven't checked the one back here today, so I'm gonna go back here and check it. I don't know, but we might actually have something. Right there is the dog proof. We actually have a trail camera right there. And we have saw some things on trail camera. Just not what I think it probably was that ate, the, ate our little baby chicken. If you haven't seen what happened to the baby chick, if I can find a video, I'll put that right here. But that does bring us in here to the little building. As you can see, well, all of our trapping stuff, she's coming out today. You thinking we go dog proof or more live traps? I think we need to set two more traps. Yeah. This big trap, we had a lot of luck on, right? Mm -hmm. But this little trap, we had a lot of luck on. Like a lot, a lot of luck. Looks kind of small. You don't think very much about it. The world's biggest possum fit in this. Legit, the world's biggest possum. I really don't know exactly where we would tie this off to a tree. I'm gonna put this one a little closer to the chicken than what we have the other dog proof. Um, so I think I'm actually gonna stake this one in the ground with an earth anchor. I've gotta get that dirt out of there somehow. All right, I think we got what we need. Let's go get these traps set. I'm kind of undecided on where to put this thing. That's why I wanted to get a stake. All these trees are kind of growed up right here and it would be kind of a mess to deal with. But I think what I'm gonna do is actually put it like right here. This is where I'm gonna stake it down. I couldn't find any of my cables that I used to connect to the dog proofs. So I'm just gonna use one of my snares. Now he does have a lot of room to run around right here. It's gonna be a huge dirt circle. But that's all we got and that's what we're gonna work with. So this right here, you drive it down in the ground using this stake. And then when you pull up on it, it turns sideways and that causes it to pull up against the ground and then they can't get out. To be honest with you, it's not that hard to trap coons. You don't have to really worry about sand or anything like that. Set this thing, all you do, push this in. Ow, okay, maybe a little easier said than done. Push this in until you can get this trigger down. You wanna set that right there. She's set. Now, like I said, I could probably get far more, get away buddy, I don't want you in here. I could probably get far more complicated with this thing. And this is called a dog proof, so, I mean, we should be good, <laughs> okay? All right, we got some berry nuggets right here. We picked these up. They work okay, they're not terrible. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in there. I'm gonna give them a good healthy amount. Maybe put a few on the ground here. He's dying to get in that trap, ain't he? Mm -hmm. All right, and this right here is some salmon oil. We're just gonna use that, a little dab on the ball. Bada bing, bada boom. This golf ball basically keeps the mice from getting in there, eating everything up, because mice will actually rob your bait and not even set off the trap. But raccoons, possums, things like that, they can knock it off, get in there, get trapped, and then they just wait on me to come get them taken care of. Pretty much all there is to uh, setting a dog proof. There isn't much to it. It's a pretty good trap. Now, as for this guy, the live trap, I think what we're gonna do with that is actually put it right next to the chicken coop. If we put it right next to the chicken coop and put stuff in it, is that drawing them to the chicken coop? I think it kinda, maybe, yeah, it kinda is. Uh, so it's, I tell you what, I think I'm gonna put it a little closer than our other one. I think I'm gonna put it right here, right here. So we got this one, and then we have that one way out there, if you guys can see that. Okay, while we're, God, my, my voice is getting worse, isn't it? What we're gonna be using for this one, a good bait for pretty much about everything, tuna. I love tuna. You like tuna, John? Mm -hmm. John mm -hmm. loves tuna. John works out a lot, so he likes a lot of protein. Tuna has protein. If you guys don't like the whole idea of something catching their hand in something and being held there, if you feel like that's cruel, and some people do, I mean, I just think it's a very effective way to catch stuff. But if you do feel that way, live traps are great option. So I'm just gonna pour the juice around here and get him come in checking stuff out. And I'm just gonna put it right back in there. We got the tuna in the back here. John, if you wanna come up here, I'll show him how it works. So basically, you're gonna pull this thing up. This right here is what keeps the, the coons or whatever get from getting out. Lift that up, open this up, and set that little trigger right there. This trigger is connected back here to this little pan. 
and that little pan when they go back there to eat the food and step on it it's going to let that go and boom you got them now one thing you got to worry about they will reach in from the back sometimes and set off the trap what we're going to do i'm actually going to put this right here against this bucket that may stop them just a little bit now, i'm also going to put a block on top of it because sometimes they'll roll it over that's pretty much all there is to it there isn't much to trapping raccoons is i would say probably the number one predator for chickens so what in tarnation is going on here look at this we got an egg sitting outside the coop and well it's not eating it's not eating so that's a great sign part of me is proud of that but i'm not sure why they're laying on the ground you think it we did put some nesting box curtains in there so i don't know if that has something to do with it but we do need to check eggs today so let's see how many eggs we got oh we do got some there's two look here candace candace come here check candace get out of here candace i got my eyes on you i spoke too soon that's all we got we just got three let's see if i can get this egg with a mat real quick look at that who squirted that one out just on the ground somebody somebody had diarrhea didn't they mm -hmm. popped it out real fast well we got four eggs today that ain't terrible we've been trying some new feed by the way you guys probably aren't up to that point on the shorts but this right here is what we've been feeding them i forgot what it's called but my goodness it looks pretty good and well it smells smells good it's got some like, a little spice to it you smell that john mm. yeah i don't know i don't know where the spices are coming from but it's got a little bit of everything in there which is usually pretty good for chickens look at them bunch of hyenas i tell you what candace i'm surprised you even like feed get in there get in there we do have some free rangers out right now they should be good but i do give them just a little bit of food to come around scratch around on so and i know you guys have been seeing this little guy and well this isn't really a guy it is a girl but this is our brand new squirrel dog i think we're going to name her reese she's a spunky little dog i'll tell you that but she is super cute she's really taking up with john finn's still kind of my main boy but she's just playful she is actually a feist a full-blooded feist and her dad is supposed to be a really good squirrel dog that's exactly what i'm needing i'm needing a good squirrel dog now unfortunately i don't think that she's gonna be able to probably hunt this year i don't know if you asked her she probably would honestly she's she, I, I feel like she would hunt until she did find a squirrel because she has got all kind of energy she is a cute little thing though she absolutely fits in around here all right well we're back up here at the house right here's what i wanted to show you guys all right we got a few eggs inside the incubator it's been a while since i've done this but this little project right here is what we've been working on and it's it, oh, oh i see veins john i want to put it back in there but i just show them real quick show them real quick look on this side you see that you see those veins right there can they see it can kind of see a little pink. i don't know i don't know if you can see it but guys, they are veins in the left side, John. I'm so excited. I, th I thought it was a failure. I thought it was an absolute failure. So this project that we're doing, we're trying to cut a top. Trying to cut a. <laughs> we're trying to cut the top off an egg and actually watch the development of an egg inside. Unfortunately, this guy, well, he's developing on the left, on the right side of the egg, so we're not really seeing much. But we do see some veins, which is super cool. We had these other eggs in here. I don't know if I should open this. If I don't know how that affects them. We may candle one egg. What do you think? You think it'll work? We got these eggs right here that we got from our buddy Thomas recently. We traded him a rooster and decided that we wanted the rooster back. And he was very forgiving. And he gave us the rooster back. So we were like, you know what, Thomas? We're going to incubate these eggs for you. Thomas also has some very cool looking hens that I want one of. And hopefully one of these eggs are going to come out looking just like that hen. I think I'm going to talk him into to giving me one. So. Let's just candle one egg and just see where they're at, John. I don't know how many we got that's viable, that's fertilized, but let's find out. Okay, well, that's not a good sign. That means that egg is not fertile. Because they've been in there for a few days now. That egg is most definitely not fertile. We're going to go ahead and pull this egg, actually. we got to try another one. we got to get a fertile one so I can show them what it looks like. Uh, this one also, oh, that one is fertile. You can see those little veins right there? Can they see that? Mm. This one is fertile. There's veins in there. Let's, let's just look at one more. I lied, okay? That one mm -hmm. is also developing. You can see the veins right there. I am so excited about the Kalkenstein. Mm -hmm. uh, we call it Kalkenstein because like Frankenstein, it's kind of like an experiment. I'm Dr. Frankenstein, whatever. We're calling it Kalkenstein. That is the best progress that we've had. I don't know if you guys got to see it good, but I could definitely see veins coming out from uh, from the side. 
ideally that would be on top and we would get to watch the development that one's probably not going to work out that way probably once it gets so far we will be able to see it but still pretty cool oh man it feels good out john i'll tell you why because we just hit a hundred thousand on youtube you know how long i've worked on youtube mm. a long time five six absolutely years. long time just want to say shout out to everyone who has subscribed and that is commenting and engaging with the content i know shorts are the big thing right now that's where the majority of you guys have come from uh, I love my short form content. I hope you guys do too. Uh, we're already at 125,000 subs. So we may, by golly, we might hit 200,000. Appreciate y'all for watching. Make sure to turn on the bell notifications, even if you are subscribed, so you don't miss these videos. I'm going to try to post more long form content. So again, thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.